Okay, so I've got this one set up here. In fact, I've got another one here. I built it twice so I can remember how to do it. Um, so I'll turn off uh, both of these for now, but I'll still build in this same file so I can refer to this one to make sure I'm doing it all right. Let me just grab all of these elements. I'll add them to display layer. So they're all gone. So the first thing we want to do is build the first leg here. Um, and then we'll duplicate it to make the other legs. So whenever you're uh, creating, and I'm going to build the rig before I do the geometry because we're not really that interested in the geometry at this point, but how to set up the rig. And I can add the geometry later to follow the rig exactly. So um, now whenever you create a joint or a skeleton system in Maya, um, you can just leave everything at the defaults here. Shouldn't be anything to change. You can reset the tool. But you don't ever want to do it in the perspective window because you don't know exactly where the joints are going to go. So we'll build it here in the front view and we'll start um, in the middle of the world and work out. So let me just see uh, where I did it here. So I'm just going to use this as a guide for myself. And I'm just going to snap to points here. So I'll hold down um, X and I'll snap to uh, grid lines. Snap, snap, snap. Snap. So the way that these things are created depends on how you want the leg to be shaped. So I started up here, I think, at seven units up, went up and over one, went down one, two, three, four, and then over one, two, three, four for the next joint, then over one and down three, and then this is my little foot here. So this thing is going to, this will be the knee, this will be the hip, and this is what we'll call the root joint. So let me just turn off these things for now. So we have this basic setup here. Before I do anything else, I'm going to start naming these things because it gets really um, complicated after a while. And if you just have everything called joint and a number, uh, you'll lose track quickly. So I'm going to call this one root. And since I've built in this file a couple of times already, I've already got root and I've got root A, so I'll call this root B. This one, the next one down, I'm going to call the hip, B. This is the knee, knee B. Call this one the ankle. And finally, the toe. So this is just for convenience sake for me to, to know what these things are. You can name it whatever you want. So now, if I want to make the six other legs, I could try to revolve this around the center, but I think we might run into some problems. So you'll remember that if we go to Duplicate Special, I'm just going to reset the settings because I was making instances before. But I can choose to uh, make copies of this and rotate it around one of the axes. So I need to make, uh, say, rotate 60 degrees around Y, so X, Y, Z, and make five copies. So if I apply this, you can see I get this kind of funny result. It's because it's rotating it around the local axis of that joint, right? And the joint axes will, it, you can see that it looks like it's pointing up in the way that we want, but if we go into rotation, you can see that it's rotating around this joint, and so the x-axis of this joint is pointing down towards the next joint, and you can see this little red line in here. This indicates the x-axis of this joint is pointing down to the next one, and so on, which is what we want. We want to have consistent uh, joint orientation. So if I want to do this, 
one workaround is to um, I'm going to detach my hip from this joint. I'll do this in the outliner. So I'll open up the outliner here. So if we just ignore all this stuff, we're just working down here for now. So root B, if I hold down shift and click on the X or the cross here, we'll open up all of the hierarchy. So I just want to detach the hip from the root. So if I use the middle mouse button, I can just drag it out. And you can see what happens on screen here. The visual representation of the hierarchy breaks. Because a joint system, you'll remember from last term, is just a visual hierarchy. Things are related to each other. The pivot point of one controls the movement of another. So when I detach the hip and its children from the root, it just gets rid of that joint representation. So now I just want to rotate this thing around the middle of the world. But if I, you can see the rotation here doesn't really work well for me either. So what I'll do, just as a quick workaround, I'll just group this hip with itself. So if I do Command G, you can see it's created a new group. But it puts the pivot point at the center of the world, which is what we want. We want to rotate around there. Now there might be another way to do this. I don't know, but this works well. So we'll do that same thing. Go to Edit. Duplicate special with the group selected. I still have it rotating 60 degrees around Y, five copies, and I can just click apply. So now it's created the legs for us in the position that we want, and it's created a number of groups here. So let's just look in the perspective view to see what we have. So that's what we're after, right? And we've got our little joint here uh, floating in the middle. That's our root. It's not connected to anything right now, but we'll fix that now. So the first thing we want to do are detach or ungroup these groups. We don't need this group node anymore. It's just a convenience for rotating around the center of the world. So we can just go to edit and ungroup. And so we're now left with all the names. But you'll notice that when we um, ungroup them it conveniently for us, because they had all the same names, it added, it appended a, a one, two, three, four, five onto the end. And if we open up the um, the, the groups here, you can see that it didn't append those names here. Now there's probably a way we could automate this, but we'll just go in and add those names, uh, the numbers afterwards. But for now, we want to reattach these legs to the root. And so just like by moving them out, we got rid of the joint between them, we can simply middle mouse drag all of them back onto the root and it connects them with new joints. Now the rotation of these joints should be correct, but we can double check here. So what we want to see in this case is each joint pointing down to the next one in the chain. Here we can see it's pointing down the x-axis, which is good. But if we want to make sure, we can orient the joints. So if I select the root joint here and go to Skeleton and Orient Joint, we can just open up the option box here. And this is, it's trying to say what the primary axis is, X, which is the way we have it set up. So X will be pointing towards its child joint. The secondary axis is Y, so this controls how it will preferentially rotate when you force it to, to bend. So we'll use Y and then the world axis orientation is up and Y. So, and we also have this turned on, orient children of selected joints. So we'll go down the chain and make sure they're all pointing in the right direction. And I think we'll probably get an error when we do this. Yeah. So it says can't perform joint orientation, it's because the root um, has non-zero transformations. So if we just go to modify and freeze its transformations, we have to turn on joint orient here as well, and freeze transformations. And now if we go to skeleton and orient joint, let's hope that it works. Yeah. So I saw some change there. I think the the root switched around a little bit. But the root has so many children, it doesn't know where to point. But it doesn't really matter because it's the center of this uh, array of joints. 
but all the other ones look good. No, really nothing changed. I think it was fine the way it was before, but sometimes you have to reorient the joints. If you move them, for example, so you can move joints around. So for example, if I want to move this one to a new position, if I just go to move and drag it, it moves its children too, right? But if we want to just move its position while the children stay in their position, we can hit home on the keyboard and we can move its pivot. And it moves, but the children don't. But you'll notice now, if I go back to home, the joint orientation is incorrect. And so the rotations will be unpredictable. So in that case, you'd want to reorient the joints using that same thing, and probably from the root down so all the children get uh, oriented in the correct direction. But the best thing to do, if you can, is just to have them positioned properly when you create them to avoid these problems. But uh, you can't always do that. Okay. So what do we have here? So we've got all of these joints. So now, let's before we do anything else, let's create the spine. So I'll just create a new joint system, and I don't know how long exactly I want to make it, but I'll just go to the joint tool. Maybe I'll start here. X, eh, go up two units maybe, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's good. So I've got these six joints now. The end joint doesn't have a bone attached to it because it's not linked to anything else, so joint six is the end. But they're all named joint one, joint two, joint three, joint one, joint six. So we want to rename these things so we can, an easy way to do it is simply to select all these joints and up here at the top in your status bar we can, you'll, you'll probably see yours open, I don't have as much uh, screen resolution as you guys do because I'm projecting, but if we click on here, oops, it's going to deselect them. I ran into this problem before. Now the drop-down menu normally tells you you can, oh it's because I'm still in the joint tool, that's why, I think. Yeah, so if you go up here, I have to get out of the joint tool before you can do this, so I just hit Q to go back to my select tool. Um, you can change it to the rename function. So if I click on this, I can change the name of all of these joints at the same time. So I'll call them Spine B, because I'm working on number three here, and hit enter, and it changes the name. And of course, this spine has to be attached to the root too. You can see there's a space here. So we can simply grab spine B and middle mouse drag it onto root B. Oops, sorry. Deselect those first. Select spine B, drag it onto the root. and it makes the connection for us here, this little fella here. So we've got our basic structure set up. Now, when I create the head for this geometry, I don't want that to deform, so I'm just going to make it a child of this top um, joint here. So let me just create one piece of geometry for now. I'll create a polygon. You use the platonic solids because it includes an icosahedron. So, yes, yes, yes. And so the head shape of this thing is an icosahedron. It's sort of a stretched icosahedron. So if we just take this thing and rotate it a little bit, like this, scale it up, and then Select some vertices and just stretch this guy out. That's kind of roughly the head shape, something like that, these, um, these triangles. So I can just put it here. Let me select this vertex and move it over a bit. Maybe make it look a little nicer. Look a little nicer. I 
pebbling in a bit. If I can find the pebble. Pebble. Neville the bevel. Okay, so we can just change this a little bit, add some segments. So this is the first sort of skinning that we're going to do, but it's just a real basic sort of skinning. We're just going to attach it. So we'll call this head B. And this we want to attach to spine B5. So I'll just make it a child. So now if I rotate this joint, the head moves with it. We'll talk about skinning geometry in different ways this afternoon, uh, but for now, oh, what's, who's that? So we've got the basic structure here, but right now, if we want to move these legs around, we have to use what's called forward kinematics. And remember, we talked about this last term a little bit, where when we want to move these around, we have to rotate each joint. So it's forward because the effects are felt down the chain. So you start with the parent. If you rotate the parent, the children follow. That's forward kinematics. So if you're, example like I showed before, if you're swinging your arm, it's being driven by uh, action at the shoulder, that's a forward kinematic sort of thing. But if you reach out with your hand and you want to place your hand deliberately, you want to use inverse kinematics. So driving it from the child and forcing the rotations back up the chain. So you're inverting the order. So the parent is ru or the child is now ruling the parent. And that's kind of what we want here. We want to use an inverse kinematic setup. So let me just do that. What time is it? Are you guys okay? Right. Are you okay? I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> Finally, somebody asked. Um, so we'll just deal with this leg here, and I should really name these things, um, but I'm not going to bother right now. I'll do it when we take a break. Um, so under skeleton, we have the IK handle tool, and we'll just open up the options, and we'll reset the, sol uh, the options. We're going to use the basic setup here, using the IK uh, single chain solver, SC solver. The other option, which we looked at last term too, was the R IK RP solver, which is the rotate plane solver. And the RP solver can be useful for things like knees, for example, because it gives you the added function of twisting around, uh, like at the hip, to control the way the knee is pointing. And you can lock it with a constraint so the knee doesn't accidentally flip. But in this case, it's a pretty basic setup, so we don't really need that extra control. So we'll just use the single chain solver. And so you, when you create an IK handle, you select the top level node, so the, the parent up here. So we're going to select hip, and then we'll select angle. And now a new node is created. And if we look here in the outliner, we have IK handle 3. So I've got a whole bunch of other IK handles in here doing other things. But this is the IK handle. So now if I want to move the leg, I select this IK handle. And when I move it around, it solves the rotation of the knee and the hip for me. So this is inverse kinematics because the movement of the child is ruling the movement and rotation of the parents. OK. So if I want to move this thing around to a different position when it lands, I can use the inverse kinematics to place this. So I can go around and do that for each one. I'm just going to name this um, IK. Which one is this attached to? This is just hip B. So I'll call this IK ankle, ankle, ankle B because it's controlling, it's attached to ankle B here, the first one. So let me just go in and, and do the other ones quickly. Any questions so far as we go along? Uh, I am recording all this so you can review it after. 
so I can't handle two again, so I'll just click here. Hip, ankle, Y to execute it again. Hip, ankle, Y, hip, ankle, So now I've got one for each foot, or each leg. So I can move these around. And so now my animation is just linked to this one thing, rather than having to rotate each joint to get the thing into position. Now the only sort of problem I kind of face is that if I move this thing around, it moves everything. If I grab the root, and the feet don't stay locked in place. And that's the next thing we have to do. Do a setup that locks the feet into place when the root moves. So the neck can descend while the feet stay firmly on the floor. But before I do that, I'm just going to rename these things quickly, just so I don't lose track of what's what. So for example, this one is IK4, which is linked to hip B2. So I'll call this IK B4. Sorry, forgive me for doing this, but this is to B3, so six is linked to four. Was that two? Oh, the first one was two. Thanks for not saying anything. <laughs> so seven is linked to one. Almost there. Ankle B, I already did that one. So three is linked to what? What? I did it again, didn't I? Five. So society collapses, you know. People witness and say nothing. Oh, yeah, that's what they all say. I didn't see a thing, officer. All right, all right. Well, maybe someone get it right the first time. Oh, that's true. Thank you very much for putting that out. <laughs> I was nervous already, but that's worse. Um, so now we've got this set up. Everything's labeled the way we want. So what we're going to do now is create another set of IKs, going from the ankle down to the toe. So let's just start here. Same thing. So we're just going to click here, click here. So what's that one like to? So we'll call this one IK uh, Toby. Toby. And this one is not linked to anything. And I'll just go around and do the rest. And I'll do. Um, I'll just do a single setup on one and then we'll stop. So we can see. So here's the one that we just created. So this one doesn't really do anything for us, but we're going to use it to, to link another joint system to this. So again, Y, so I'll click from here to here. Y from here to here. So ankle to toe. And this is a very standard setup called the reverse foot. Uh, and I'm just doing a modified version of it. But if you need to look it up, that's what you would look for, the reverse foot setup. So the next thing I'm going to create is my reverse foot, which is just a two-joint chain going
going opposite the ankle to toe. So I'll just do one here. And I'm going to rename these other things when we take a break. Um, so I'll skeleton, joint tool, and instead of going from the top down, I'll start at the floor here. Click one, two, and I'm going to name this one before I go any further. So this is uh, RF for reverse foot, B, and this is toe. And then the other one up here is RFB. Now, what you name it is up to you, but as long as it's consistent, ankle. So I need a bunch of these. So I'm going to first snap it into place over top of this one. And the reason I created it over here is because if I create a new joint system and I clicked on an old joint system first, it would link it to that joint system. So this one has to be separate. So I'm creating it just one unit over, but now I'll move it into place. And I'm going to make six copies or five copies of it. So doing the same thing that I did before. I'll group them so it has a center pivot. Edit, duplicate special. Now we've got a bunch of them. And I'll just simply ungroup them. Let's name them for us, but we'll just concentrate on this one for a moment. So this is the reverse foot setup part. So here's the IK for the toe, and here's the IK for the ankle of this leg, right? So we created these before, these two things. And the trick is that you just make the IK for the toe the child of the reverse foot toe. So if I drag this IK toe to reverse foot toe, it's now it's child, you can see that it's put that there. And then we want to make IK ankle the child of reverse foot ankle. Then we'll have a little setup like this. And I would go around and do that for each one. But what this allows me to do now is, if I go in here, if I select RF toe, it's kind of hard to select here, but if I select it here, and if I move it, the leg moves with it because it's the parent of all those IKs. But what is better now, if I grab the root and move it, it stays in place because it's locked down. So we have a moving pivot point depending on which node we select. And here's the reason. You can see how complex this is getting, things lying over top of each other. I would create uh, a NURB circle or something and put it into place here. Whoops. Whoops. Just snap it into place. I'm going to make a bunch of them. So let me just move its pivot point to the middle of the world. So this is the same as grouping it. This allows me to move its pivot point, and I can duplicate special again. Got a bunch of them. Now I want to center their pivots, so modify. So now their pivot points are back into the middle of each one. And the important thing to do at this point, other than naming them, which I'll do when we take a break, is to freeze their transformations. Because right now each one will be not, it won't have zero values here. And the reason you want to freeze the transformations is we're going to be using this to animate the position of the feet. And if we want them to return to their home position, it's better if the transformations are frozen. We can just type zeros in all in these places. So I'm going to modify, freeze transformations, and it zeroes everything out. So that means if I grab this, whoops, this circle move into a weird position. If I wanted to get it back home, I can just type 0 and it goes back home. So finally, and then I'll stop talking, we'll take a break, and we'll continue on afterwards, is we make the reverse foot toe a child of the appropriate circle. So I'll call this foot controller B, um, uh, foot controller. No, this is just the first one, so I'll just call foot controller B. 
and I'll just drag the toe as its child. And now when I select this circle, it does everything I want it to do. When I move the root down, it stays locked in that position that solves the rotation. Now you can see if I overextend it, things weird things start to happen. But we would create a joint system that accommodates what we need to do and no more. So I can just zero this out and it goes back home. So that's how you set up the leg joint systems, the spine, which we haven't rigged yet, and then the reverse foot. So uh, we'll stop now and over the break I'll fix all these feet to do the same thing and we'll come back and we'll rig the spine. Any questions? So the reverse toe, you made the um, child a circle. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you could do this also with constraints. You could do a parent constraint between the circle um, and the reverse toe. But there are, there are places where you can use constraints for joint systems. In this case, I think it's simplest just to make it a child because we, we're never going to change that. Um, although I could be not thinking of something that a constraint would be better for. But we'll look at doing using constraints as well to lock the position of one thing to another in a rig. I think particularly when we set up the root joint to descend to inject the DNA. Uh, where are you keeping your, your uh, Once I render it out, I'll put it up on YouTube. Okay.